What's up guys, it's Demi and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I will be talking about the time that my roommates, ex-roommates, voted to kick me out of the house. <laughs> this is a low-key painful story time because it involves betrayal, backstabbing, um, fakeness. It involves a lot of stuff, so... I decided to do a story time about it because I've never talked about this situation ever before. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the story time. So it was my junior year of college, and I decided that I did not want to live in the dorms anymore. So one of my friends, well, ex-friends, we'll call her Halsley, she was looking for three other roommates to live with her because her parents were renting out a house in my college town. So Halsley and another one of my friends, I'll call her Veronica, she was looking for a place to live as well for the school year. So she decided we might as well live with Halsley. So keep in mind that I knew Halsley and Veronica. All three of us had lived on the same dorm floor my first year at the school. And that's how we met. And we would hang out, like not a lot, but we would hang out. Um, and I was more close to Veronica, like me and her would actively hang out. So I knew them. And the last person that was going to be the third roommate was Halsley's cousin, which I didn't even know that she had a cousin that went to her school. And her name, we'll just call her Jessica. It's me. Jessica. I'm in here. Oh my gosh. So Jessica's the one that you guys need to be peeping the most throughout this whole entire story. But so I didn't know Jessica. Like I didn't even know that Halsley had a cousin that went to our school. I didn't even know that she had any family that like were in our college town. So I was like, you know, that's fine. Like it's your cousin. I'm sure she's great if she's your cousin. Like I don't care. It would be fun to live with you guys. Let's just do it. So I ended up signing the lease for the entire school year. Oh, and another point I want to make is that Halsley is white. Veronica is Vietnamese and white. And Jessica is black and white. So she's biracial. Halsley is her cousin on her white side. So the first thing, I'm a big animal lover and I love animals. Like I grew up with animals. So I was like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. We can get like a little house dog and it'll be fun. Or we can get like a house cat or just something cute and cuddly. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, 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 this would be fun. So considering the fact that Halsley's parents pretty much owned the house and they were renting it out to us, the only person that could have a animal was Halsley. So we couldn't get like a new animal and Halsley brought her really old golden retriever to live with us, which the golden retriever was cute. I think she was a golden retriever. I don't know, but she was cute. She was sweet. Um, she had like a lot of like problems with her legs or something or her knees. I don't remember which one, but she would fall down the steps like quite often. <laughs> um, and she shed a lot. Like she shed a lot. I never had a dog that shed so much. And I would not allow this dog in my room sometimes because of all the hair that would be all over the place. And I would never like really sit in the living room on the living room couch either because there would always be hair on the couch from the dog. And they literally did not care. Like they would let dog hair be all over their leggings and get right back in the bed. So yeah, the dog shed a lot, but I mean, that didn't really bother me. It was just annoying that we couldn't have any other like pets, like not even smaller pets. We only had to have her dog, which was like the annoying part because I'm like, why but i'm like her parents own the house it's their rules whatever whatever let's just move on so at the very beginning of the school year we were getting all moved in and i did something that i guess i don't know if it was wrong i mean you tell me if it was wrong but i staged my room just because of the vibes you know and i always wonder why my mom told me not to let people know that you sage because when they had smell and like 
I it, okay so it's also my fault because I didn't really realize that sage gets so smoky and like it gets really you know it has a pungent odor so I sage in my room and they literally accused me of smoking weed like no joke and her dad like had to come in my room and like search my room and all this federal type stuff and I'm like do you really think that I'm stupid enough to smoke weed in this house like why would I be doing that you know what I'm saying why would I be doing that so I'm like no wonder my mom told me to never let people know that you sage um, because people just have different opinions about that and stuff and I mean that's another topic but I'm like what makes you really think that I'm doing that so I immediately felt like criminalized um, by him like coming in my room and doing all that stuff because I'm like no one's smoking weed sir you really think that this smell is weed like do the two even match no it doesn't even match that was low-key my fault because I shouldn't have saged but after I saged you could definitely feel like the energy shift between like my room and the rest of the house so I'm low-key glad that I did because I consider my room like my sanctuary like my place to you know, be by myself and like chill and like decompress from like the school day. And um, so I saged it and I have no regrets. All right, so moving on, we get a little bit more into the school year and me, I start taking on like all new responsibilities during the school year. So I became president, vice president of an organization, which I later ended up becoming president. And then with that came a lot of responsibility. And then I got an internship back in my hometown, which was about an hour away from my college town. Having that internship, I had to commute back and forth like a lot throughout the week from my college town to my hometown just to um, do my internship. So I was busy. Like I was like in my zone because like graduation was around the corner and I'm like, I need to like kill every single opportunity that I get because I need to be putting my best foot forward so that I can just have a better outcome when I leave. So I guess with, you know, like being president of an organization, you have exec meetings, body meetings, you have just like a, a lot of stuff that you have to do. And I essentially was holding up my organization by itself, which could be a whole nother story time because there was like a lot of drama behind that. So yeah, I was doing a lot. And then I was trying to make sure that I was giving my 100% all at my internship because I wanted to make a good impression. I was kind of like getting busy and I noticed that my roommates, like they had their own lives, yes, but they spent a lot of time with each other, like a lot of time just like chilling in the living room, like doing their own thing and like kind of drinking and gossiping and doing stuff that, I mean, now that I look back on it, it's really low vibrational, but no shade. Um, and I just wasn't into that. Like, I'm just not into, like, sitting around gossiping and just drinking when I have things that I have to do. And, like, I wasn't as productive as I am today, and I'm still working on, like, my productivity, but I just wanted to get things done, <laughs> basically. And I had, like, other things to focus on. So they kind of, like, accused me of not really liking them because I wouldn't hang out with them as much. And I'm like, no, like, it's not that I don't like you. It's just that I don't have time to sit around with you guys 24-7 and like kind of waste my time. You know, it's not that I don't like you. It's just that I have a lot of things that I have going on. And I don't feel like I have to feel obligated to tell you every single thing I have going on in my life. Just take my word for it and realize it's not that I don't like you, but it's just that I have stuff to do. And I come to realize that these girls are actually trifling, like me, Halsley, and Veronica, we all had to share one bathroom together and Jessica got a bathroom to herself in the basement. When I tell you that Veronica and Halsley were low-key trifling, they were low-key trifling. They would let the bathroom trash pile up all the way to the brim. They would let dishes, all three of them would let dishes pile up in the sink and not wash them for days. The dog would constantly, like I said, shed and get in our trash um, and like rip the trash up. And I'm like, girl, you're too old to be ripping trash up. Like you're, you're an old dog. Why are you still doing that? And then like I have curly hair, Halsley had curly hair, and then Veronica had really long straight hair. So there would always be hair in the tub. Um, the sink would get crusty and dirty and I would clean up. 
I don't feel like I have to like clean up and have you see that for me to prove that I cleaned up after myself because growing up I used to have to do dishes my mom taught me how to clean out the tub vacuum like I did chores like as a child and growing up throughout my adolescence and teenage years like I will clean up after myself like that's not a problem like I'm not saying I'm the most tip-top neat person but I'm not about to let the trash pile up and have tampons overflowing in the trash can and dishes pile up with crusty disgusting water and they would do that they would be very trifling and another trifling thing that they would do is they would let random like guys that I mean I didn't know them but I guess Halsley and Jessica did they would let random guys spend the night in our living room and have our living room smelling like feet literally feet I remember one day I woke up I think this was around homecoming and she had people from their hometown or whatever come down and spend the night and the living room smelled like feet and trash and just drunk that's what it smelled like because she had random guys sleeping I call them random because I didn't know them random guys sleeping in our living room and I feel as if like Halsley with her parents owning the house and then Jessica being family that they essentially felt like they could do whatever they wanted to do and that we just had to accept it because we were living there underneath their conditions but at the same time it's not respectful like I don't feel comfortable having random drunk males in my house sleeping on the couch I don't know them people are crazy anything could happen so I would sleep with my door my bedroom door locked all the time because I don't trust them I don't know them and I'm not about to be in a situation where I get hurt because one of your friends is drunk so you know things like that would happen and I'm not really a confrontational person I would just pay my rent and pay my part of the utilities it's not that I didn't care I did care but like I said I'm not really confrontational which I'm working on being more like assertive and being more upfront with like how I'm feeling and standing up for myself but I kind of just felt like what is that going to do? Like, they're still going to have random guys spend the night. They're probably just going to ask, oh, can we have such and such spend the night? I just moved on from it. I kind of just let it go. I'm like, I have bigger fish to fry. They want to have random guys spend the night. Like, that's on them. So let's fast forward to when Jessica really started to get on my nerves. So she would always, like, touch my laundry. So we had a washer and a dryer in the basement, which is where Jessica's, like, living space was so when you came down into the basement there was like a washer and dryer and then there was like an area where there was a couch for probably guests and like a sitting area and then to your if, if you look this way it was Jessica's room and her bathroom so obviously we would have to go down there to use the washer and the dryer so I remember I had washed my clothes and I put them in the dryer and then I think I just forgot about them. And I don't feel like this is like a huge problem to like if you if you accidentally left your clothes in the dryer, I just feel like if I would have came across somebody's stuff in the dryer, I would have just moved it to the side so I could put my stuff in there. So my stuff was in the dryer, right? I forgot about it. Tell me why Jessica takes my stuff out of the dryer and she puts it on the basement floor. And I go down to the basement to get my stuff because I remembered. And it was on the, my stuff was on the floor, like my clean stuff. My wash rags, my pillowcases, my sheets, that type of stuff was on the floor. And I immediately texted them. I knew it was Jessica who did it, but I still confronted them all in the group chat. And I was like, you know, whoever put my stuff on the floor, that's not cool. You can just let me know if my stuff is there and just politely move my stuff to the side if it's an issue, you know? So that was like the first time that I kind of was side-eyeing her and I was like, you're touching my stuff for what? You know what I'm saying? Like, why do you have to do that? You could have just let me know that it was there and you could have just moved it to the side or you could have just moved it to the side. You didn't have to put it on the floor. And she was like, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I put it on the floor. Okay, so yeah, so I guess after that, there was tension between Jessica and I because I told them, which really her, to not put my stuff on the floor, especially not my wash rags and my pillowcases and things like that. And I don't feel like accidentally leaving your stuff in the dryer is a huge deal breaker when it comes to living with other people. Keep in mind, I kept to myself. I had a lot going on. I was traveling constantly back and forth from 
my college town to my hometown pretty much every week to work. I was doing a lot of interviews at that time. I was also doing a lot with my organization, which kind of took up more of my time. And I just had like a life outside of the house. The second um, problem I had with Jessica was when she took my laundry this time and put it in my room. Like while I wasn't there, I guess I didn't like lock my door one day, but I walked into my room and there was a basket with my laundry in it. And I'm like, girl, first of all, you could have left it in the basement. Second of all, you could have let me know. I'm sorry that I forgot that my laundry was in the dryer, but I, I honestly don't feel like that that is a big make or break thing when you're living with other people. Like, it's laundry that I left in the dryer. You're acting like I'm having random people spend the night. You're acting like I'm not cleaning up after myself. You're acting like I have a dog in here that's shedding all over the place and falling down the steps. You act like, like, you just act like I'm doing things that are completely absurd and disrespectful and I'm not. That was when I was like, okay, I'm done messing with y'all. Like, you know, I'm just kind of done. They started having a mutual friend come over all the time, which was another white girl. And I could tell that she low-key had a problem with me too because of them gossiping behind my back about me. And, you know, being pretty much, like, I know that Jessica is mixed, but pretty much being the only black person in the house, like, where I don't have the privilege to be able to, like, turn off my blackness and turn it on whenever I want to, it's like, white people, I notice that sometimes they will make black people uncomfortable by kind of, like, accusing us of having an attitude when we don't or taking your silence and just your to yourselfness as a as an issue like as a problem like I don't have to come out here and chit chat and sit on this couch that's filled with dog hair for you guys to like me I don't have to do any of that what I'm obligated to do is pay my rent pay my utilities and go to school because that's what I'm here for and it was getting down to the nitty-gritty like I only had one more full calendar year left of school and I was going to be graduated at that point so I'm like I don't care honestly like I'm used to the cattiness it was just it was a cattiness you know so I guess they started to have issues with me more and more and they tried to accuse me of leaving dishes in the sink piled up and never cleaning them up and when they did that, that's when I knew that they're trying to just pick with me and poke with me for any little reason. So to keep to be completely transparent, I used to eat out a lot in college. Like I would be at Qdoba frequently. Me and my other friends, we would go to Qdoba a lot. I would just eat out like entirely too much. Like I spent so much money on food. I would grocery shop, but like I didn't really eat cook like I didn't really like cook anything and if I did cook it was noodles I do remember leaving a bowl from like my noodles in the sink but I never left like skillets and like plates and like silverware and you know that type of stuff that they were doing in the sink and I'm like are you kidding me like you guys do not clean up the kitchen that often like you guys will get together sometimes and cook a huge Thanksgiving meal together and then leave all of the dishes in the sink. But you're trying to complain about me leaving a bowl and a, a fork in the sink from my di from my noodles? Okay. Now you're now you're really trying it. One day, Jessica sent a message in the group chat saying that everybody should be washing the appropriate amount of articles of clothing she tried to sound smart by saying articles of clothing but she was like everybody should be washing the appropriate articles of clothing in the dish in the uh everybody should be washing the appropriate articles of clothing in the washer and dryer she sent that message because there would be times where like you know how you have a certain shirt and you might wash it by itself because it bleeds or you don't want it to shrink or you don't want it to get mangy and dingy. Sometimes I would do that. Or sometimes like my loads, I guess they didn't fill up. They didn't fill up the washer and dryer to their liking. So she I guess she was trying to direct it at me and say that I wasn't washing enough um, clothes. And she tried to say they tried to say I was running up the water bill from doing that. First of all, our water bill, the highest the water bill had ever got was probably like $10 per person. And there was 
their parents would send us the bills that we were paying. And the water bill was always the smallest bill. Like our water bill was not high at all. And they tried to say that I was running up the water bill from washing, from not washing enough clothes in the washer. Girl, please. Nobody was running up the water bill. They just had a problem with me. They just wanted to have a problem with me any way, shape, or form. They got mad at me because I said that I was I bought my own toilet paper. I, I just don't understand how that's a problem. Like, yes, I live with you guys. There had been so many instances of disrespect and just stuff that was pissing me off to the point where I'm like, I'm just going to buy some of my own stuff. Like, I don't even want to mess with them. I don't want to really talk to them. Like, they're accusing me of leaving dishes in the sink and they're super loud and disrespectful. And I just, I don't want to deal with it. I was like buying my own toilet paper. And I guess they got mad that I bought my own toilet paper and I used my own toilet paper. Who would have thought? You get mad because I use my own money to buy my own stuff and use it. Wow, that's that's crazy. I remember one night um, I was at home. I was just chilling in my room. They were all out in the living room. They had texted me and they were like, can you come out to the living room? And then they essentially was like, yeah, we just feel like um, you don't want to live here with us and you don't like us. And there's been tension with us. And we want to vote that you don't sign another lease. And I'm like, okay, I don't understand what I have done. You're mad because I don't want to be all up under you. And because of all this stuff that's happened, you know, because I did go off on them about them trying to accuse me of running the water bill up because that's absurd. Like nobody was running the water bill up. I was washing my clothes. Like it's a problem that I wash my clothes. So they were like, we want to um, vote that you don't sign another lease. So like I had told you, me and Veronica were closer than me and Halsley were. And she was just sitting there not saying anything. She never came and talked to me about anything. She never like had my back essentially. And I had been there for her through a lot of stuff that she had dealt with before. And she wasn't there for me at all. So that had really pissed me off and we got into an argument and I just felt like I was shaded by Ver Veronica, but I was also shaded by Halsley because we were friends too. So I just didn't understand like what the issue was. And I'm like, yeah, there were problems in the past, but I really didn't do anything to provoke those issues. I mean, I kind of just did my own thing and didn't really bother them. Like I said, I had a lot of things I was doing and Veronica, she was super busy all the time. She she was active on campus. She had a lot of things that she was into as well. And I'm like, I don't see her being penalized for doing her own thing. This is why I say that when you're black, like people, I feel like white people really want to try you and take it there with you and accuse you of being all these things that you're not. So I got super heated when they told me they wanted to vote me out of the house and we all got into an argument. Of course, Jessica wanted to pop off the most because she had the most problems with me and she didn't like me the most. I went off on them all and um, Halsey was like, fine, you can just um, continue to live because we still had a few months left like living there. She was like, you can just continue to do what you do. Come in the house and go in your room and then leave. And I'm like... Okay, I will continue to do that. Um, thanks. So um, I really didn't care that I went off on them at that point because I didn't care about being friends with them. You know, I didn't, I didn't care because too many things had happened. There was too much disrespect. Halsley and Jessica felt like they could do whatever because they were family and because their family owned the house. Like I shouldn't have ever lived here in the first place. I should have lived in my own space um, for my junior year because I ended up getting an apartment after that living on my own so I had I really didn't care that I went off on them because it was too much stuff built up over time that I just didn't speak up about which is where I that's where I had a problem because I'm like there were so many opportunities where I could have said that something wasn't right or I didn't like a certain way that they were doing stuff but I just didn't um so that was kind of on me for not voicing my opinion like sooner and just like being assertive and putting my foot down about stuff. But at the same time, there's really no easy way to do that when you're black and when you're a woman because you're just going to be accused of being extra or being loud or being aggressive. So how do you really mitigate that situation? 
I feel like it was easier for Jessica to live in that type of environment because, I mean, she was half white. She had white family. She is probably around white people a lot more than she is black people. And I always got the vibes that she resonated with her white side a lot more. So I just feel like as a biracial woman, it was easier for her to navigate those type of situations and being around those type of people. But being 100% black, I always felt like some of that stuff that they would do in the house was like low key racially motivated. And like I was always more of a target because I was black. Like I always got the vibes from Halsley's mom that she was like low key racist. Her dad was cool. Like he would always say I was a good tenant and all the drama he would always say that I was a good tenant and all the drama that was happening in the house was essentially something that we had to work on but I always got racist vibes from her mother Veronica's parents like I said she's Vietnamese and white and she was in tune with her culture but I felt like she could turn that off a lot sometimes and be really whitewashed whenever she needed to and I'm not saying that she's never went through any like racially biased stuff but I feel like it's easier for her to play both sides. And her parents were definitely racist. Like, she's a good example of somebody who has racist parents and racist family, but she's still gonna be associated with black people. Veronica's parents definitely were racist because the first time I met them, they were so rude to me, so cold, so standoffish. And she knew, she knew the reason why they were like that is because I'm black. And there was no other, like, determining factor as to why like they had a problem with me it was because I was black so um I just didn't really care to meet her parents and I really didn't care started to not care for her as much anymore because she would never come to like be on my side when there was problems in the house and like I said she played both sides a lot she would play in these white people's face and then I think that if I would have been white, the problems that happened in the house probably would have came in a different way. I feel like they wouldn't have been as intimidated by me, like being to myself and wanting my own time. After having all these responsibilities and also having to like get a job too, to like pay for things and like pay for rent and put gas in my car and stuff. I did not have the capacity to even want to be around them. So yeah, I didn't have peace in that house and I felt like I was always constantly being picked at and I don't know why exactly, but it was just kind of too much for me and I was like, whatever, I don't care. I don't care about these friendships. I was never friends with you, Jessica. You always want to go through my stuff and um, you always want to mess with me and kind of like pick at me because she, she would, she would, guys. Like there was a time where... Halsley was dog sitting and this is where I knew like I I mean I knew from day one that it was going to be uh whatever Halsley says goes because her parents own the house but she brought a whole nother dog into the house to dog sit for him and I'm like we could have never done that or at least I could have never done that for anybody because we had a one pet policy and I remember once I was like walking over the dog gate and Jessica was just staring at me like, and back then, I didn't know that it was, like, evil eye, but she was definitely giving me evil eye and trying to, like, accuse me of having a problem with the other dog being there. So, yeah, like I said, they played victim all the time. They never took accountability for their actions. I mean, I don't I don't expect them to, but they never did. And um, after all that had happened, like, I want to say two years later, Veronica hit me up and she was like, hey, I'm moving to your hometown. And I was just wondering if you would ever want to hang out. Like she initially had texted me and was like, hey, how are you? Because she follows me on Instagram still. And she was like, how are you doing? Like I see that you're doing good and you're doing really well. And I was like, hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. How are you? You know, I wasn't going to be completely rude and just blow her off. But then she asked me, oh, yeah, you know, I'm moving to your hometown. And I was wondering if you would ever want to hang out sometime girl no reply left on red left on left on red left on delivered at that point because no like I'm not really the type of person to kick it with people again after they blow me off and like do me dirty like I used to maybe when I was in high school I used to do that like I would still be friends with people who did me bad but now that I've like gotten older and I'm coming more into like myself I don't deal with people like that. Like once the feelings of being cool with you or if it's a relationship, once those feelings of liking you are over, like it's completely over with me. Like I don't want to talk to you ever again. I 
I don't need to. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be friends. I don't, I don't want anything to do with you. You stabbed me in the back. You were never there for me. You treated me like I was trash. You acted like I didn't amount to anything. So why would I want to hang out? You never apologized. Veronica still to this day never apologized for anything. She felt like hitting me up. I guess she felt like I'm going to hit her up and then I'm going to ask her to hang out and then I'm going to apologize. I don't know. But I don't even want to give her the benefit of the doubt for that. She still never apologized. She had so many opportunities where she could have and she never did. So I just... I didn't reply. I don't feel like it was wrong for me not to reply. But I just didn't reply because why would I want to talk to you? Like, you never apologize. And what's crazy is all these girls still follow me on social media. Veronica does, Halsley does, and Jessica does. And they'd be watching my stories and all types of stuff. And I unfollowed all of them. I deleted their numbers. Like, you know, like I said, once I'm done, I'm done. Like, so the moral of the story is my roommates voted me out of the house. They were trifling. They were disgusting. And, you know, there were things that we all could have done better to, like, make our living situation better. But, I mean, if they would have just minded the business that paid them and just left me alone, then there wouldn't have been any issues. Like I said, I don't talk to them anymore. I don't care to talk to them anymore. I just left after I moved out. And then I ended up getting another apartment somewhere closer to campus where I didn't have to drive every day. And it was by myself. And I just spent my last senior year by myself. And I did good moral of the story is don't move in with fake people don't tolerate fake people and do your own thing and don't care what anybody has to say if somebody's intimidated by you doing your own thing and you living in your truth and you being your own person then that says more about them than it does about you so that's all i have for this story time thank you guys so much for watching my video let me know what you guys think in the comments below and if i should do more story times because i have more stories that I could tell y'all that are just crazy and just wild that I could tell you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video.